Hallelujah. Well, welcome back again, everybody, to Friday Night Bible Study. I uh, just have a couple scriptures that the Lord had placed into my heart to share with you today. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about being approved by God. Let's pray before we jump in. Heavenly Father, we just love you. We appreciate you. Sir, you are the best thing that's ever happened to us. And we acknowledge that. We acknowledge you. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit as our teacher and our guide, as always. Father, thank you that you show us truth from your word that changes our lives. That we don't ever have to read the Bible and leave the same person that we were before we started reading. Father, thank you that we rely upon the Holy Spirit to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, to make this easy for us to understand. Father, thank you for a transformed life in each and every heart that would be listening right now. Father, thank you for your blessing upon this time as we approach your word humbly. We thank you for, for speaking through us to us. Lord, giving us grace to receive all that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1, if you would. I would ask and invite you to turn to the scriptures with me, either in your Bible or if you're on your device or your computer. Uh, just open the new tab and go to Bible Gateway or something like that. Follow along with me. Being approved by God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. This is Paul speaking. He says, you, know, you yourselves know, dear brothers and sisters, New Living Translation, you yourselves know, dear brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not a failure. You know how badly we had been treated at Philippi just before we came to you, and how much we, su we suffered there. Yet our God gave us the courage to declare this good news to you boldly, in spite of great opposition. So you can see we were not preaching with any deceit or impure motives or trickery. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we certainly had a right to make some demands of you, but instead we were like children among you. Or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. Don't you remember, dear brothers and sisters, how hard we worked among you? Night and day, and he goes on, he goes on. Just wanted to bring this up to illustrate a point. Where is it here? Let's see. Verse 4. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. We're going to study in a second what makes a person approved by God. What exactly does that mean to be approved by God, to do something or to be something? The best way that I can describe approval, if you have any experience going to a bank to get a loan, I mean probably teenagers and anybody younger than 18 probably wouldn't. <laughs> um, but just the best example that I can think or that I can reason. I've never actually gotten a loan from the bank, but I just know the process. When you go to the bank, you speak to a banker, you give them your information, you know, you have your proposal, what do I need this loan for? I'm going to buy a house, I'm going to start a business, right? Um, you have to present the, the banker with that information, and then they have to review that information, and they can either say yes or say no. So you can either be approved or declined for that loan. What happens when you're approved? He, he reviews the information. He sees you're most likely going to make good on your promise to pay this loan back to the bank. So we're going to approve you, right? We're going to put, that's where that phrase comes, the stamp of approval. We're going to put our stamp of approval upon this loan and give you the money and then trust that you'll pay it back. Right, you understand. So when, when God approves us, it's not just like we, we come to Jesus and we, we start out in the, the fullness of the ministry that God has for us or the fullness of the calling of God upon our lives. You come to Jesus, thank God we get born again. Our, our, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Our lives are saved from destruction. We're going to heaven, hallelujah, right? But just because you, you've said yes to the free gift of salvation 
doesn't mean that God's going to put his stamp of approval on you to go out into the world and just, you know, jump right into ministry. Can I put it this way? Um, you will not function, you will not fulfill the call of God to the top level, the level that God wants you to be at right off the bat. You know, just like anything else, you don't start out at the top of the food chain. You don't start out as the world-class athlete. You know, you don't start out as the, as the smartest, um, you know, person in the country or whatever. People, You have to work up to that. You study. You train, right? You exercise your body. You exercise your mind. And it's the same way. He cannot put his stamp of approval on a baby Christian because they're, they have not proven themselves yet. They have not walked this out enough. They have not had enough experience under their belt. You hear what I mean? So he, he, Paul here in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, he goes through this whole list of things, and if I could put it this way, it's the qualifications for approval. Some of the qualifications for approval. Uh, verse 2, you know how badly we had been treated at Philippi just before we came to you, and how much we suffered there. So there's a suffering involved, right? There's a, there's a price that has to be paid if you want to preach the gospel boldly as it ought to be preached, and you want to have miracles, and you want to see people blessed. There's a price to pay. There's a suffering involved. Paul, pay, Paul pay, yeah, paid that price. Let's see here. Verse 3, so you can see we were not preaching with any deceit or impure motives or trickery. So deceit, right, an impure motive, uh, trying to trick people by what you say, by the words that you say. See, God cannot just put people into, into what we call public ministry, you know, having a platform, having a pulpit, a place to, to speak at publicly. He cannot just throw whoever, you know, whoever <laughs> into that position. There's there's an approving process here. There's there's a, a stamp of approval that needs to be placed on a person's life. They have to prove that they're not going to go and preach deceit or with impure motives, trying to get people to do things, you know, for selfish gain, for money, like we'll read later. But, you know, anything like that, trying to manipulate people. That's not the point. Verse 4, we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. He said our purpose is to please God, not people. So part of being approved by God means you're, you're living your life in such a way that you're trying to please God. And it doesn't matter if you're pleasing people or not. You're going to choose to be faithful to the call of God, regardless of how people receive it. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Verse 5, never once did we try to win you with flattery. So flattery, again, just puffing people up and, and saying things that aren't true in an effort to make them feel better about themselves. No, we speak the truth, we speak it in love. Why? Because the truth is what sets people free. We want to see lasting change in people's hearts and lives. We, we cannot withhold the truth from them. Amen? God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. That's another giant, you know disqualification from being approved by God. Verse 6, As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we certainly had a right to make some demands of you, but instead we were like children among you. Or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. See, all this stuff, this is being approved by God. Not speaking with deceit, not trying to, to manipulate people into giving you money. Um, not seeking the, the praise of people. You know, that was such an amazing message, Pastor. That was so wonderful. I was so... Like, that's not the reason why we do this. Verse 8, We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. Right? It's about getting down and dirty, so to speak. <laughs> not being high and mighty. Speaking the Word of God in, you know, in love, and then expecting there to be change and, and getting down and helping people out, coming down to where they're at. Again, not trying to manipulate people, not trying to get money, or extort money from people, not preaching with an impure motive of, oh, look at me, how cool I am, how, how you know, eloquently I can speak and tell jokes and make people laugh and whatever. We're, we're trying to, to bless people, trying to win people to the Lord, trying to encourage people. 
There's more to this. He goes on, but we won't read all of this for the sake of time. I would encourage you to finish reading this. Just go down. I mean, you go to the end of the chapter, but really probably about verse 13. Again, just qualify, some of the qualifications for being approved by God. James chapter 1 and verse 12, if you would. James chapter 1 and verse 12. I have this in the New King James Version. James 1, 12. It says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So there's a temptation that has to be endured, right? Then you get approved, and then you get the reward. He said here, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. See, I believe that uh, a while ago I spoke about the different crown rewards in the Bible. And not every Christian is going to receive every crown. I just, that's the way I believe, because we... we you know, I could even humble myself, and I know in my heart, I'm going to get some rewards, thank God, but I know there's people, like, I, like Brother Hagen deserves to have more rewards than I do. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's certain missionaries and people that I'm aware of, and I could take a look at my life, and just be humble enough to admit, and be like, Lord, they deserve more rewards than I do. <laughs> I'm being faithful to the call as much as I, as much as I know how to do and be, and I will be rewarded for that. And you will be rewarded for that if that's you. But, like, there's always, you know, somebody else that's going to take this further and go farther. And we have to not just be jealous and not resentful or whatever, but there's a price to pay. And, listen, we, we all could pay more of that price, right? We could all seek the face of God more. We can all pray more. We can all seek His will, do His will, you know, more. So I, I, I know in my heart there's people... That it's like, Lord, I'm going to receive some rewards on that day. And I'm going to look at other people. And some, most people, honestly, are not going to receive very much. Because they didn't do much with their lives for the kingdom of God. People have a tendency to become complacent. We become lazy. You know, thank God that I'm going to heaven, but then I'm going to live like hell until I get there. And then, <laughs> okay, so who did you bring with you to heaven? How many people did you bless? You know, did you fulfill the Great Commission? Did you fulfill the call of God upon your life as an individual? Or did you not care? Did you, you just did things your way, to live your life, to make money, have a job, and try and be happy. See, you will never truly be happy doing that. And that's where a lot of folks miss it. Again, on the other hand of the coin, I'm going to get rewards, but I, I know there's people that are going to get more, and you cannot begrudge people. They paid a higher price than I did. You know, they went to, they went to communist China. <laughs> administered in leper villages and leper colonies. You see, I haven't done that. The Lord might call me to do that eventually. I don't know. We can't put a limit or a box on God. But <clears throat> just for the sake of saying, we, we cannot begrudge people for the rewards that they're given. There is a price to pay, and if you are willing to pay that price, you will, you will receive the reward. It's just that simple. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You see, so there's a temptation that has to be endured before we get approved by God. <clears throat> Again, he cannot just put his stamp of approval on a baby Christian that's never had any life experience. Part of the reason why I believe, you know, we're, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. And being in this world, we have to go through certain things that the world has to go through. You see, we are not cursed as people because we've had, we've come to Jesus. We've gotten born again. Now the blessing of God is upon and in our lives. So there is no curse whatsoever upon us. But the curse is still upon the world, the world system, the planet Earth. You know, there's a reason why there's earthquakes and tornadoes and people say, well, why, why is God doing this? God's not doing this. He has to allow certain things to happen because mankind sold out to Satan. So right now, the, the earth itself, planet earth, is not under ownership by, because all the earth belongs to the Lord, the fullness thereof, but it's under, if I could put it this way, it's under a lease <clears throat> to the devil. Temporarily, the devil is running the ship. 
<clears throat> he's causing things to happen to try and pull people away from God, <clears throat> if I can put it this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's doing the best he can to, to snatch as many people away from God as he can. And until Jesus comes back, the second coming, and the enemy is, is finally dealt with and put away, we're still going to have hardship. We're still going to have problems. We're still going to have issues. And you see, that's not God's fault. That's just the way that the, the world is, because the world is in a fallen, broken state right now. <clears throat> so we are all going to have to endure some temptation. We're all going to have to go through some hard times. We're all going to have to, to have some, some pain and suffering. And again, not at the will of God or the hand of God. It's just we live in this world. We, we suffer persecution, right? We get made fun of at work. We get laughed at. We get um, you know, looked down upon because we're Christians and because we don't necessarily fit in with the rest of the world. That's fine. <laughs> Jesus said, blessed are you for being persecuted for my name's sake. Blessed are you. There's a blessing that comes with persecution. You see, it's temporary pain, but it's eternal glory. It's eternal joy. There is an eternal reward for that. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who de deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us or even an angel from heaven, who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again what we have said before. If anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcome, let that person be cursed. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So again, part of being approved by God. You're going to have to go against the grain. You're going to have to go against the will, quote-unquote, of people to fulfill the will of God. What do he say in verse 10? If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Jesus said himself, you cannot serve two masters. You will serve somebody. And people think, well, I don't have any, I, you know, no gods, no masters. I'm, I'm my own person. They don't realize they're, they're serving the devil. <laughs> you cannot have no master. You will, you will serve somebody. So it's like you might as well serve the Lord because his, his mercies are good. and he, his, He's good and his mercies endure forever. Right? As opposed to the devil that hates your guts and wants to kill you. <laughs> so it's like if you're going to have to serve somebody, serve the one who loves you. And blesses you and wants to cooperate with you and help you in every area of your life. You understand? See, but there's a price to pay because the rest of the world doesn't see it that way. See, I'm my own person. There, There is no God. There is no masters. I don't serve anybody but me. They don't realize they're serving the devil. They don't realize that they're a slave. You understand? Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So you have to come to a place in your own life that I'm not going to just serve people to make them happy. I'm going to serve God to make Him happy, to be a blessing to people, to win as many people to the Lord as possible, to bless as many people as possible. And if they spit in my face, if they reject me and persecute me, so be it, I'm going to be faithful to the call of God. Amen? So be it, I'm going to be faithful to the call of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 18 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18. <clears throat> it says, When people commend themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. Let's read that one more time. When people commend themselves, commend, you can say approve. When people approve themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to approve them. See, we have a tendency sometimes as people to put our own stamp of approval on ourselves, on our behavior, 
And people have a tendency to justify what they're doing, even though it's wrong. And even though in their heart sometimes they know it's wrong, we try and justify it and, and blame it on other people. You know, well, I have to do things this way because of the actions of my spouse or the actions of my kids or the people at work or whatever. I, I have to act stressed out. Don't you understand? I have to, to cuss and, and be irate and be angry. You see, we, we have to be depressed because after all, all this, it's like, no. <clears throat> we put our stamp of approval on things and God's not putting a stamp of approval on that. <clears throat> he said here, when people command or approve themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. You know, really what this verse is, is saying, you have a Christian that's like, oh, I'm so spiritual. I, I'm so anointed by God. God sent me here to, to fix everybody else's problems. <laughs> God sent me here to, to be his man of faith and power for the hour, so to speak, or whatever. He said when people approve themselves, it doesn't count for much. You see, no matter what titles you give yourself, if the Lord's not behind it, there will be no power. <laughs> right? There will be no real lasting fruit or lasting results. And we, I've seen it before in people's lives. They, they jump into ministry and they make the business cards, you know. I saw one the other day and it took me by surprise. I'm like, I've actually never seen this before. But there was a woman, even if she's called by God, to be a prophet. <clears throat> but it said, Her Excellency, Prophetess so-and-so on the flyer for this meeting that they were having in the church. And I believe the meeting was somewhere in Africa, you know. And um, somebody that I saw on Facebook that I'm friends with. And there was a whole list of speakers, and some of them, you know, pastor so-and-so, apostle so-and-so, doctor so-and-so. But this one, it said, Her, Her Excellency, Prophetess so-and-so. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> like I said, even if she's called by God, that type of, that type of attitude will, will diminish the returns in a person's life. It just will. When people commend or approve themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. And again, I'm not even saying that that woman put that in that flyer. Whoever designed the flyer might have put that in there. And she had no knowledge of it. I don't know. That's why you can't judge. We look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So I'm, I can't judge that woman's heart. But you just see patterns. Anytime that that type of behavior takes root in a person's life, and they make the business cards, you know, Apostle, Prophet, so-and-so, Lord's General, or we have the title, you know, I could say this man's name because this is a great history lesson as well, but there was a man named A.A. A. Allen, and he, he really did produce a lot of fruit in his life. From the time he was about my age, I think, <clears throat> up until... You know, right when he died, he, he would conduct tent meetings back in the early, this is like early to mid-1900s. I don't know exactly when he died. I want to say it was in the 40s or 50s, maybe, possibly the 60s. I don't know. I'd have to look it up again. Please forgive me. I didn't have a chance to look it up beforehand. I just thought of it now, but this man, he died in his 50s. He died early. And yet he produced a lot of fruit, a lot of results in his ministry. And there were a couple things that went wrong in his life. Number one, and the reason why he died, honestly, was because of alcoholism. Um, they found him in a hotel room and he had literally drank himself to death. He struggled with this thing for most of his life. And it was one of those things, he would fight it and it would come back. He would fight it and it would come back. There was a, a time he, he got hurt or something in his body, and he began to drink um, just to kind of ease the pain. And eventually one night it just overtook him, and he, he literally drank himself to death. He died of alcohol poisoning. Again, in his 50s. Was that the will of God? Of course not. What was the will of God? For him to walk free of alcoholism, for him to be pain-free. You know, we have to take this stuff and apply it to our own lives. You can go out and win people to the Lord and see miracles because the Lord loves people and He wants to bless people, but you have to walk it out in your own life just as well as anybody else. See, you don't get a special perk or a special privilege or God doesn't sweep things under the rug just because you're called and just because you're anointed. 
you're just as accountable as everybody else for all of your actions. So again, he was he struggled with alcoholism, but the other thing too, <clears throat> he started titling his services. Um and he, he got a name for himself being known as God's man of faith and power. God's man of faith and power. And it's one of those kind of a gray area. Because again, I'm not sure if he did that himself or if other people came up with that. Because the truth of the matter was he he was faith-filled and there, he did have an extremely powerful ministry. Lots of people got healed and he saw miracles constantly. Um, but again, you don't know the, the, the person's heart. If, if ego got in there somehow, right? If pride got in there. All those things, God can't work with that. He's not going to put his stamp of approval completely on a person's life. You know, and, and they're going to have pride, and they're going to have these issues, and they're going to deal with stuff behind closed doors. And again, he died early. Was that the will of God? Did God do that to him? No, of course not. His own choices did. We should say his own lack of choosing. Right? I, I chose not to get the help. I chose not to, to, to seek out help for this addiction, for this alcoholism. Right? He's too full of pride to go and, and, and say, I need help. When people commend or approve themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. And even in A.A. Allen's life, I mean, he, he, he bore fruit and he has an eternal reward. And when we see him in heaven, he's going to have some amazing rewards. And it's going to be like, wow, that was A.A. Allen's reward. But listen, he died in his 50s. He could have done so much more. And I know he would say the same thing if he was here. He'd be like, please don't be like me. Don't, don't, you know, prove unfaithful in the end. Fight anything that, that would try and take the call of God away from you. You know, what would it have been like to have him live into his 80s? He would have seen, uh, you know, the revivals all throughout the 60s, the 70s, the charismatic renewal. You know, if he even lived long enough, he could have seen the, the Word of Faith movement. Rama started. He might have even had a part to play for all we know. Come to Rhema in the early days and give a prophetic word and, you know, be there for the founding of Rhema or whatever. We don't really know. That's the, the, the sad part of it. So I just pray and hope and believe that we are not going to be like that. Amen? We're going to fulfill the call of God. One last scripture. We'll end with this. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2, 15. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive His approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the Word of God. So again, some key ingredients to being approved. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive His approval. Again, there's a price to pay. There's time that has to be spent. There's effort that has to be put forth. There's, there's a hard work to be done. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the word of truth. You see, even in Brother A. A. Allen's life, you know, if he was here and we could talk to him, there'd be some shame involved. If he went through his life story to us, you know, and talked about all the good stuff and talked about the miracles and the meetings and the, you know, the anointing that was upon his life, and then he could relate to us that, that, Last couple of weeks, you know, he was in pain, and, he, and he, instead of running to the Lord, he ran back to alcohol, and eventually it killed him, right? We could hear that, and there would be shame, there would be regret, there would be remorse in that story. There's a price to pay. I, I can't say it enough. There's, there's pain, there's effort, there's a struggle, but the end result is worth it. How can we say that? Because the end result is you're approved by God. That stamp of approval is on your life. What does that stamp of approval mean? It means that God says, I can work completely with this person. This person pleases me. This person has, cho has chosen to seek my face, to fulfill the call of God, to pursue the will of God. 
And that's the type of person that's going to see the, the will of God fulfilled in their lives. Stand before him and not have any regrets and hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Now enter into the joy that's set before you. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the word of truth. Last qualification for approval that we'll talk about today before we end. He brings this up here, who correctly explains the word of truth. Having revelation of the Bible, having revelation about God, because who, tr- who is the word of God? Jesus. Who correctly explains the word of truth. So you know Jesus, you know the Bible. You know the Bible, you know Jesus. If you don't know the Bible, you don't really know Jesus. Because there's a whole group of people, I know Jesus, I know who he is, and they, they even quote what he said, but they misinterpret everything and they don't understand the heart of it. You know the Bible, you know Jesus. You don't know the Bible, you just simply don't know Jesus. You might think you do, you're proving yourself, but it's worthless. You need that stamp of approval from God. That's why he said here, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. That's not just anybody. That's only the people that work hard, that, that, that endeavor to say, Lord, I want your approval in my life. I'm going to study this out. And I want to, to, I don't want to just share the word of my opinion with people. I want to share the word of truth. So please help me to understand it so that I would know what I'm talking about. And that people would be blessed by what I have to say. You see, correctly explaining the word of truth, correctly explaining the Bible is part of being approved by God. How you handle the scriptures says a lot to how you're approved, if you're approved or not. Because depending on how you treat the scriptures, that's how you treat people. That's how you treat God, really. It's it's an either an act of worship, you know, God, I want to do things right. I want to bless people. I wanna I don't want to share my opinion. I don't want to share from an impure motive. Right? I want to have something to offer people. And if you're if you're in that place, then he says, Yes, I can work with that. Then let's study this out together. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us, but we have to put forth some effort. If we're not doing anything, there's nothing to help. (laughs) Right? There's nothing to come alongside with and support. So that's why we have to work hard, study, show ourselves approved unto God. So that we can receive His approval. Amen? Heavenly Father, we just thank You for today. Thank You for Your Word. Thank You for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we endeavor to be approved by God. We endeavor to to study after your word, to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, to be a blessing to people everywhere that we go. Thank you for your approval on our lives, Lord, if we would choose that and and say yes to the call of God. Thank you for your approval. Father, we just bless you. We thank you again for the, the rest of our day, that you'd be with us as you always are, until we come again together next time. Lord, thank you for helping us to understand your word. Thank you, Lord, that you don't make it hard for us. We just have to cooperate with you. We just have to say, Lord, help me. I'm in need, and I need the Holy Spirit to come and help me. Father, we just love you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. We'll see you again Sunday morning, 10 a.m. for our normal Sunday morning service. Um... Yeah, God bless you. We love you. Have a great day.